Hey everybody, this is Tyson with HHO for Life. Um, following up with you guys on the uh, secondary air inlet to my gas vaporizer. Um, I know that there's been a few of you wanting me to show it in better detail so that you can build it yourself if you choose to. Let me tell you right now, it's kind of a rigged setup, but it does work, so. I'll come over here. I don't have my vaporizer installed right now. I'm working on a couple of things, so. Um, but this is it. All right, I'll turn it around. See, there's a spring right there. This is the gate hinge. If I can get a good view of it. Um, there's the cable that goes to it. If I can get a good view under here, I can't see the screen, so. Right up in there is where it connects up into my air intake. Um, I can undo the hose for you to the air intake so that you guys can see it better, but here it is. Okay, so I, I described it in pretty good detail um, in uh, my video in the description of my of my uh, video. So um, what I have is an inch and a half piece of PVC pipe. Connected to it, I have a uh, gate hinge. There's three places where you can put screws. Um, so I mounted it with all three places. I could have drilled more holes or drilled them in different places or cut it and all that kind of stuff, but I just left that part how it is. And this top part right here, um, I, uh, I did cut the top of the hinge off because it was too tall and it was hitting up against my engine block and the exhaust manifold. Um, so, I have it attached there. I have a spacer in between, as you can see. Um, and that's just to space it out evenly because I, when I glued my uh, the half inch fender washer, the half inch by two inch fender washer on to the hinge, I didn't have it sitting down far enough. So there was a gap, so I had to put a spacer in between to make it so that it seats right, so that it seats flush when it's closed. See that? Okay. Um, so I attached the uh, um, fender washer with an epoxy that's for metal to metal. Uh, basically, weld them together with epoxy. You can even drill holes and tap this type of stuff. I don't remember the name of it. I got it at Lowe's though in the paint department. Um, but it works really well and it holds up really nicely. Um, okay, so what I did is on the top of the hinge right here where I have the fender washer connected, I drilled holes. I, ha I had hole a, a big line of holes um, so that I could adjust the different height of my spring to make it so that the tension is different if I needed to. Um, and it works just fine where it's at right here. Just down low right up against um, by where the, like right against where the fender washer's at. Um, and so I have this, the spring connected through one of those holes. And then I, uh, put a screw on the other side, um, where there's a hook in the spring. Just screwed it to the pipe. So that when I open the valve, it'll automatically close itself. That way, when my butterfly when I when I um, let off on the the gas in my car um, the spring will close will pull the valve closed so um, okay and this is how I have it connected to my but the butterfly valve I have the cable connected in between okay what I did is I drilled the hole through the hinge and it's centered through the hole on the fender washer and then what I did is I got the little uh, caps or whatever the stoppers um, and I crimped a stopper onto the end of the cable to prevent the cable from being pulled back through the hole um, and that actually works out pretty nicely I did the same exact thing over here where my butterfly valve is um, drill the hole through my butterfly valve um, open it up with my finger placed the stopper on it and then and then I crimped it on um, and then when I have it connected to my vaporizer, I have this pipe pulled just tight enough so that 
there's tension on the cable line. That way, right when I push on the accelerator pedal, um, when the butterfly valve opens up inside my air intake, it pulls on the cable and opens my valve up for my, that goes to my vaporizer. Um, this valve is installed on the air outlet, gas vapor outlet portion of my vaporizer. Um, so, let me see if I can un unscrew this uh, hose clamp. Try to, I'm trying to do this all one-handed, guys. Loosen it up so that I can pull this tubing off so that you can see. All right. Uh, that's the hose. I had to cut a slit in it so that it would fit, fit so that the, uh, I could put the, uh, the rubber, I don't know what you call it, an adapter or something, um, over where the air intake is. And, uh, that way, and then I, I made it so that there's like no, not really any tension in between the rubber right here and the, the cable so that it floats for more freely so that there's not much resistance. Okay, there's my air intake right there. Inside of my air intake, you see how the cable line goes through that hole? Well, you can push this open with your finger. Let's see if I can do it. See, I can open that up with my finger, and then I can grab it when I have both hands. And after I drill the hole, I I push the cable through the hole, and while well, I had it open, and I looped it back around this way, and then I crimped the fitting on, and then pulled it back through. Um, so that's how that works. So when I push on the gas, this little butterfly valve right here opens up. I can do it. Can't grab it with one hand, but anyway, it opens up. Um, let's see if I can do it with the screwdriver. So you can see that it does open the right direction. Okay, so it opens up and pulls on this cable. When it pulls on this this cable, it and when it pulls on the cable, it pulls on the hinge, which opens up my secondary air in that valve. So that's how that works, guys. Um, I hope that's a good enough description and whatnot. Um, so kind of rigged setup like I said but that's how it works and it does actually work pretty well um, but when uh, when you build the design that runs off of vaporization through heat you actually don't need this secondary valve um, it works just fine without it just so you guys know um, I actually I actually pushed this this pipe forward more so that there wasn't tension on it when my um, when my butterfly valve and my air intake opens up um, that way this wouldn't open when it was connected to my vaporizer um, and it kept it closed and it ran better that way um, I actually had it so that when I would put on, push on my accelerator um, towards towards uh, when I get would get it around 4 3 3500 to 4000 rpms it would open this up just a teeny bit so I could let a little bit more air flow through it um, and I also tried it to where it wasn't open at all either way it works just fine um, and I did discover when I was running the vapor that was created by the heat, um, it actually gave my car a little bit more power. Right? Um, so, just an awesome thing all around, guys. But, let's take this off. So, um, that's about it. My little kids are playing around. There's my piece of crap Jeep. I'm actually going to install this vaporizer on my Jeep. Um, that's part of the reason why I took it out of my Buick. I'm gonna try it on my Jeep now. Um, and 
I'm gonna make more modifications to my Jeep. I'm gonna do like wrap the coil, the copper coil around my exhaust and stuff like that on my Jeep. I don't want to do it on my wife's car because um, that's our main means of transportation. I'd rather do it on mine to where it's not our main means of transportation. Um, so in case there's any problems. But all right, guys. Well, um, hope you enjoyed it. As always, leave comments, uh, subscribe, share this information because it is really good information. Um, learn from other people's videos as well. Research, do some, do some research, guys, because um, the stuff does require some research. Even though most of the ideas that I have gotten have just been from thinking really hard for hours and hours and hours and days upon days, um, and drawing things and just trying things. Um, I have researched, so it's an important thing to do. Please research, experiment for yourself. You can build the bubbler design. The only difference that I would, the only change that I would make to my uh, my bub my vaporizer um, that I had in the video where my car was running and I was driving down the road is the air inlet. How I showed um, the bottom of it, I drilled eighth inch holes. You need to drill much smaller holes because it, it bubbles up too much gas and some liquid does get in. Even with all the backflash screening that I had inside of the chamber, um, that did definitely uh, spread the, the liquid gas out and turn it into more of a mist. But you got to make the hole small so that it doesn't create, um, so that the bubbles aren't as intense because because they can be sucked, the liquid can be sucked up into the chamber if it's uh, if the bubbles are as big as they are in mine. Um, so, don't know how small to go, but I think uh, I think Peter did drill drill holes that were like 7:45, or I don't remember. But uh, go watch his videos; he has some good information, and in his gas vaporizer vaporizer design, uh, to where he has that copper tubing inside of the container and has it bubbling through. They're they're pretty small holes, so that he doesn't have the problem of the. Uh, the splashing of the gas and, and having the liquid being sucked up into the engine so um, that is probably one of the only things that I would actually change um, other other than that it worked pretty well um, so I have a couple more things that I want to do with my current design before I start on my new design um, I am going to to create a container that I can put around my uh, exhaust pipe um, where my exhaust manifold's at to preheat the air before it goes into my container because that will help with the vaporization process quite a bit more. So, all right, um, it's Tyson with HHO for life. Enjoy, leave comments, subscribe. Peace out.